Hey, how's it going? Good, how you doing? So, what do we got here? Uh, the helmet of the greatest stuntman that ever lived, Evil Knievel. All right, give me a second. Uh, I'm gonna grab the worst stuntman that ever lived. Pops, what's up? Evil Knievel helmet. Okay, pretty cool. Evil Knievel just did some crazy stuff. I mean, one of his very first jumps, he was gonna jump over so many cars, and at the end of the jump, there was a box of rattlesnakes. But he didn't make it all the way, and he landed on the box of rattlesnakes. <laughs> I'm at the pawn shop today to sell my iconic Evil Knievel helmet. It has evil emblazoned across the front and stars across the bar. I'd like to get $1,500 for the helmet. I think it's a very fair bargain for an iconic piece of memorabilia. If I make the sale today, I'm hoping to invest that money into an Evil Knievel cape or leather suit. This is definitely cool. I actually don't even really know what his first name was. They just started calling him Evil Knievel because he was just constantly evading the police, and the cops started calling him Evil Knievel. I mean, this guy didn't have a scared bone in his body, and if you told him he couldn't do something, he was going to show you he could. Yeah, I think throughout his career, he spent, like, a full three years in the hospital for motorcycle wrecks. Mm. In 1967, when he jumped the fountains at Caesar's Palace, you know, he jumped the fountains but crashed when he landed and spent 29 days in a coma. I mean, I just imagine later in life he probably had a lot of aching bones. So where'd you get this thing? I bought it from a dealer on the East Coast who bought it from a big Evil Knievel collector. All right, you got any paperwork or anything with it? I don't, unfortunately. The big question, how much you want for this thing? 1500 Okay. If this is actually one of his helmets, it would be worth a lot more than 1500 bucks and you have no paperwork with it. Correct. Okay, so can I call somebody who will know for 100% sure if this is one of Evil Knievel's helmets? I'd love that. Okay, give me a few minutes, I'll be right back. Thank you. I'm hoping the expert corroborates what I think, that it is a true piece that belonged to Evil Knievel. Clearly you can see why we called you down. And to me, it's so hard to separate fact from fiction from Evil Knievel. You hear story after story, you're the guy that kind of clarifies some stuff for me. I'm Kelly Knievel, and my dad's Evil Knievel. I was a teenager when he was his famous Evil Knievel self, and my dad was one of the most famous people in the United States. Did he ever just intentionally know that he wasn't gonna make a jump and crash? Intentionally? I'm, I'm <laughs> sure he's like gone over a jump and said like, I really shouldn't be doing this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Well, I remember one time in Chicago when he jumped over the sharks, he knew he wasn't gonna make the jump. So the night before he said, look, you guys, you guys are gonna have to film this because I don't think I can make this jump tomorrow. So he did the jump and sure enough, he crashed. So did he intentionally crash? No. Did he ever have a feeling that he may not make it? Yes. So, do you mind taking a look at it for me? No, I, actually, I'd like to take a look at it. Now, will you tell me where you got this again? I bought it in an online auction from an individual who purchased it from somebody that had a huge Evil Knievel collection. And you paid how much for it? Fifteen hundred. Six hundred dollars. Correct. Um, it's got a sticker in there. I don't know if that's an original sticker or not, but. You see this Color Me Lucky here? It's all in black. Color Me Lucky is normally in colors, and this is a modern version of my dad on his motorcycle. So I would say it's pretty, but as far as it being an authentic Evil Knievel helmet, I say no. It'll look nice in the shop, though. OK. All right, have a good one, man. All right, thanks, guys. Nice to meet you, Nice Kelly. to meet you, too. Thank you. So here's the deal, man. You heard what Evil Knievel's son had to say about it. So I'll give you 300 bucks for it. I appreciate that, but I paid 600 and I was hoping for 1500 I thought that was a fair uh, price. OK, you, you paid 600 for a fake item, and then you're trying to sell a fake item for 1500 bucks. <laughs> I'm willing to get you out of this whole conundrum for $300, is what I'm offering you. He wants it for himself. Once again, 300 bucks. Well. I think my wife will be happy that I'm starting to get rid of stuff. So yes, we'll do it. All right, right over there, someone will write you up. Sounds great. You want that for yourself. Don't lie to me. I know I do. I'm just too cheap to pay for a real one.